Okay, let's talk about how cavities form because I think this is the major question that people ask when asking about or thinking about oral health. As I mentioned before, cavities are literally holes. They're fenestrations as the uh, nerds call them, nerds like me call them, little fenestrations, little holes down into the enamel that if they make it down to the dentin layer of the tooth, most likely do need to be drilled and filled and presumably build, okay? but. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Mo and I'm a licensed dentist. I'll be critiquing Dr. Andrew Huberman in neuroscientist claims on the formation of dental cavities and how to prevent them. Your goal, I think all of our goal, is to try and keep our teeth in a state of remineralization by keeping the pH, that is the relative acid alkaline balance of the mouth, such that the saliva supports remineralization. Now. So the pH of the oral cavity or the mouth ideally should be uh, roughly in neutral. And why is that? Because your teeth, in particular the enamel, has something called as a critical pH. The critical pH point is about 5.5 in reference to the uh, Canadian Dental Association website. But uh, in university, when we studied, it was roughly about uh, that, that range. And once the pH of your mouth or oral cavity or on the surface of your tooth drops below, or reaches that critical pH and drops below it, then uh, like sort of you can think about it as in the softening and the gradual destruction of your tooth and formation of a cavity is an effect of a caries start to progress and, and take a place in that regard and hence that's called uh, like starting off a demineralization of the surface of your tooth and hence we when we talk about prevention we're talking about remineralization methods and how can we remineralize the surface of your tooth let's think about how a cavity actually forms turns out that no specific food not even sugar causes cavities cavities are not caused by sugar cavities are caused by bacteria that feed on sugar and now that's not just a little bit of a twist in the mechanism that's a critical point there's no specific food not even pure sugar not even like a hard candy like a delicious jolly rancher i used to like those when i was a kid that gets stuck in your tooth that causes cavities no it's the bacteria that feed on sugar that then produce acid that burrows down through, that degrades, that demineralizes the tooth in this very focal area that we call a cavity. So this is what we just discussed in the beginning before he spoke, and that is the, the process of demineralization. And then as it progresses and continues, we will have a cavity, that hole, small hole uh, that forms. And what he said is correct. It's not uh, the food to directly cause it. And the food is just a means for something, for that bacteria, in particular, uh, Streptococcus mutans, to consume. And then its waste product, which is these acids, these are the ones that aid in demineralization of your tooth. Note, I said these waste products, acid, which are going to alter that pH that I talked about in the beginning. Okay. Now, if that isn't surprising enough, get this. The bacteria that causes cavities by eating sugar and releasing this acid, while there are several of them, the major one is called streptococcus mutans, or what I'll call strep mutans for short. Strep mutans is not something you're born with. It's actually a communicable bacteria. That's right, you give it to one another through how? Sharing of glasses, sharing of bottles, kissing on the mouth, etc. Now I So I forgot one very important way as how does it come into the mouth in the first place? If you remember, I, I don't think you would remember, but uh, let's say babies in general, I mean, this is going to sound horrible to say, but the mother, the, she would like feed them or she would have the foot to become at a decent temperature. I'm not saying oh, everyone practices this, but and then like feeds the baby or the mother may taste something through a straw and then give the baby or the mother may taste the food or drink 
to check its temperature and everything is fine before feeding the baby. This is a, one of the means in which the streptococcus mutans may be communicated, may be transmitted on that uh, person of a, a lower age. He, of course, talked about if somebody of an older age, how do they actually get it? But what I'm saying is if it's not there, like, naturally in the first place, from where does it come from, like, from the beginning? I am not here to tell you not to do any of those things. I'm certainly not here to tell you that. However, he's encouraging kissing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And by the way, in researching this episode, I did learn that there is a specific category of person out there. Typically, they are a dentist or married to a dentist that have opted, believe it or not, to never kiss their children near or on the mouth so as to help their children not get streptococcus mutans because all yeah so this is what we just discussed uh, a bit ago as how could it communicate from a very early age like a child or a baby almost all adults carry it not all but it's communicable like a sti or like a flu or like a cold it's communicated between individuals we are not born with it now that's a whole area of uh, let's just call it biosocial ethics decision making that I think most people are not going to be too concerned with or at least act on because let's face it most because let's face it most people are not going to change their overall behavior of kissing or usage of bottles or glasses in order to avoid getting strep mutans most people in the world have strep mutans or will get strep mutans and it lives in the mouth okay it just resides there strep mutans is there and it's hungry. What's it hungry for? Sugar. When there's sugar present, it eats it, it produces acid, the acid produces cavities, taking teeth from a state of remineralization to demineralization, or, and by the way, this is really important, if your mouth is already in a state that's more demineralization mode, so to speak, well then it will capitalize on that and it will cause cavities much faster. Okay, so. So I'll just put away all the jargon. And I'll just give you a simple example as to how your mouth could be in a prolonged state of, uh, let's say, I wouldn't call it demineral demineralization, of, but rather lower pH. So how is that? Let's say you have a cup of coffee, which is acidic. And instead of drinking that cup of coffee within a reasonable time, you know, short period of time, you're sipping, slowly sipping throughout the day or throughout your work shift or whatever uh, on that coffee. Now you're keeping actually the oral environment in the mouth uh, leaning toward a lower pH and hence accordingly as byproduct of this in a more of a demineralization, as he said, mode or state. Keep in mind that acidity is bad for the mouth. Does that mean that you should never consume a lemon or, and by the way, yes, I'm guilty of every once in a while, I'll chew a lemon slice or drinking water with lemon in it or carbonated drinks or sodas or tea or anything that has acidic flavor? No. Likewise, should you completely avoid ingesting any kind of sugar because strep mutans love sugar? No. Turns out strep mutans like sugars in the form of complex carbohydrate sugars too. So if you eat pasta or rice or oatmeal and some bread every once in a while, as I do, I'm an omnivore. I eat meat and fish and eggs and also starches and vegetables and fruits. I'm an omnivore, as most people are. Well, then strep mutans has an opportunity to eat the sugars that come from those other carbohydrates. Does that mean that if you were to have a zero carbohydrate diet, no sugars, no starches, et cetera, you would reduce the opportunity for strep mutans to consume sugar and release acid? Maybe, maybe. However, most people won't do that. And strep mutans is a very clever, maybe even diabolical bacteria. And if you are on a zero carbohydrate, zero sugar diet, there's some evidence that strep mutans will figure out ways to feed on other components of food in order to create this acid to then create cavities in your teeth. So, so what he's just trying to say is don't, trans don't have a robotic approach to your diet. It's not like sugar, no sugar, you know. It's, there is some form of flexibility. We are humans at the end of the day. We can, like, there are other uh, good good effects for the uh, lot of the foods that he mentions, right? Uh, of course, the acidic uh, component is 
effects, some of the adverse effects that these foods uh, may have. But this does not mean to not uh, consume them. However, one tip that I would say is that don't consume them over a prolonged period of time, okay? Do not consume that includes your coffee, your lemonade, especially it is with drinks because the food we just put it and eat. Unless if someone is just eating over a prolonged period of time, which is not advised as well. So the key thing to understand here is that cavities form not from foods, not from sugars per se, but from strep mutans and other bacteria that eat those sugars and create acid. Hence the critical need to keep your mouth as alkaline as possible, which does not mean that you can never drink some lemon water or coffee or tea. Here's the key point that everyone needs to remember because this dovetails beautifully into how often you should brush and floss and when you should brush and floss specifically. The key point is the degree to which your mouth is in a demin state or a remin state and the degree to which cavities have the opportunity to form is dependent on the amount of time. The amount of time in which your mouth is net acidic or net alkaline. The amount of time that you are in a demineralization mode or remineralization mode. As we just discussed uh, about the time factor is extremely critical. You do not want to be in prolonged state of a demineralization, you would be then, as a byproduct of this, more susceptible to caries, more susceptible to oral diseases. Okay, so it's the amount of time. No one, no one can avoid having their mouth be acidic every once in a while or ingesting a sugar or a food that strep mutans can feed on and produce acid. The key is to try and reduce the amount of strep mutans and reduce the amount of acid in the mouth. That's the best way to reduce cavities and even reverse cavities that have started to form. That's all for today. Thank you everyone for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, turn the notification bell on, leave a like and a comment if you have any recommendations for videos that you want me to react to. Dr. Mo Dentist out.